Hello, I'm Ryan Butcher, the principal at Kennedy Elementary School. Thank you for joining us today uh, for our October parent module. This week's uh, or this month's parent module is focusing on read alouds and the importance of reading aloud to your kids and setting perfect setting a uh, consistent time for reading in your home. As a parent, you know what, you think, oh, that's the student's job or that's the school's job, but reading is a job of all of us. And the way that the best thing that we can do is to model reading so that kids will enjoy reading. We all know that their kids would rather be, your kids would rather be on a video game or they'd rather be on their phone looking at TikTok dances or something like that. But reading is the key to success for all people. Did you guys know that almost 40% of our students at Kennedy students that are here right now, your kids, the ones that come to this school, for almost 40% of them are reading below grade level. I know. And we set time at school to read, and I know we're working on trying to set time at home to read because we need to be working together. But we need help. You know what? How do you do a read aloud? How do you encourage your kid to, to, uh, to, do, to uh, enjoy reading and, and go that? So today's module or this month's module is just about that, the importance of doing read alouds at home, and why, why do we do it, and how do you do it? Give me some tips. There's no perfect way to do it, and guess what? If you try, you're doing a good job, but we're going to give you some tips that might help you get a little bit better and have your kids asking you to read with them and setting that time instead of being on a video game or watching hours of TikToks. So here we go. So the first thing you might ask is, you know, why should I, as a parent, do read alouds with my kids? Isn't that the job of the school? Well, reading aloud is one of the most important things that parents and teachers can do with children. Reading aloud builds many important foundational skills. It introduces vocabulary, provides a model of fluent, expressive reading, and helps children recognize what reading for pleasure is all about. So, what does it look like? And how about doing it with our bigger kids? Well, let's talk about the bigger kids, our third through fifth graders first, and then we'll show you what it looks like, and then we'll give you some hints. So you ask, what about the bigger kids? I have a third grader, a fourth grader, a fifth grader, maybe even out of middle school. They're too big to be doing read alouds. So what about them? Well, here's why. Reading aloud to kids help expand their literacy skills. It helps encourage a love of reading, in a world view, and, and even more, including these. So the first thing is, it lets them experience the joy of the story. The goal is to love the story. That's the point of reading. Unless you're reading for meaning, you want to love the story. It doesn't matter. You, reading aloud is getting them to listen, and it's okay if they have reading aloud, read alouds that are happening to them where they're just an audio book. That's fine too. That's why we have my on that allows them to read to them. Okay. We want you to be our kids to get hooked on the stories in the chapter book without the frustration of reading them if they're still struggling. And like all readers, especially readers, are learning to love stories by hearing stories is the key. So read alouds need to happen even with our older kids because it's going to help them love or find the joy in the story. The second reason we would continue to do read alouds with our bigger kids is because it models fluent readers. We want kids to be fluent readers, which means that they re read at the words correctly. They read the words at a good pace, not too fast, not too slow, and with expression. You doing read alouds models like pausing at commas, stopping at the end of the sentence, changing your voice when you ask a question or when you're excited. That models what fluent readers do, and we want our kids to be fluent readers. It even helps them understand what they do when they come to a word that they don't know. And so you get to model what fluent readers are doing. That's a second reason why. The third reason why we would do read alouds 
um, for our young kids and our bigger kids is that it helps expand their vocabulary. Kids' auditory comprehension is higher than their reading comprehension. But when you pick challenging book that your kids can't read on their own, you're exposing them to a wealth of new vocabulary words. This stretches their, their language development and especially if you stop and talk about what those words mean. So expanding their vocabulary. That's one of our goals at Kenny is to know, have more words that we know and can use in context correctly. So doing a read aloud with our bigger kids and our younger kids helps expand their vocabulary. Another reason that we would do uh, read alouds with our bigger kids and of course our younger kids is that it exposes kids to authors, new authors, different types of texts and different genres, types of books. Reading aloud can get kids hooked on new authors or series of books. Once a child falls in love with the story or the author, it's hard to hold them back from reading it on their own. Reading aloud gets a chance to explore genres and texts that they normally wouldn't select. So having a read aloud time, showing them and expanding their uh, the different types of books that they would like, can pull them out and hopefully get them to enjoy different types of books. So that is our reason number four. A fifth reason why you want to do read alouds and this one's especially for the bigger kids, is to build awareness and empathy. Literature, books, are one of the best ways to help kids understand something without, ex without experiencing it for themselves. Empathy is understanding how other people feel, and books allow kids to experience things that they wouldn't have experienced in their life. And they can do it with all sorts of subjects and concepts, and building our children's understanding of humanity in the world around them. We want them to know what's out there so that they know how to interact with, with that when it happens to them, so they're not caught off guard. So building an awareness and building an empathy through literature is going to help your kids be more successful in life. A final reason why doing read allows with your children, big kids and little kids, is because it improves your child's long-term reading success. Uh, you probably know that there's decades of research that shows that reading aloud to your child daily is one of the most important activities for their reading success. And that goes for your older kids too. Kids who are read to have great vocabularies, they're better writers, and they do well overall in school. Reading improves your communication skills, it educates you, it keeps your brain healthy, reduces stress and anxiety, it motivates and inspires, it stimulates creativity, and it strengthens your writing abilities. Did you know that if you read just 15 minutes a day, in one year, you will have read over one million words? Wow. Or as Dr. Seuss put it, the more that you read, the more things you'll know, the more that you learn, the more places you'll go. And that's why reading aloud to your kid is so important. So, what does it look like? Well, here's an example of one, and then we're going to take you through the steps one by one. All right, so today's read aloud is the book, The Teacher from the Black Lagoon. Its author, the person who wrote the, the, book, the words, is Mike Thaler. The illustrator, what's an illustrator? The person who does what? Yes. The pictures is Jared Lee. All right, so if we're looking at this book, what do you think this story is going to be about? What a do you think? Lagoon. A black lagoon. Okay. And do you know what a lagoon is? No? No? I don't either, so maybe we'll think about it. But do you think black lagoon, do you think that sounds like a, a fun place to be, or do you think it sounds like a scary place to be? Scary place, scary place, place to be. And even if you were looking at the pictures, this black kind of looks kind of... Oh, Halloween scary, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. So you think this is going to be a good thing, or you think it's going to be a bad thing? Bad thing. A bad thing. Maybe a bad thing. All right. So, character. Who's the story about? Just looking at this cover or reading the title, obviously there's going to be a what? Uh, black lagoon. Oh, there, there might be a black lagoon, but we're thinking about the characters, not the place. A boy and a teacher. 
a boy and a teacher. Very good. Yeah, because there's a picture of a boy on here and he looks <gasps> oh scared because he's a black lagoon. And the author, the title says the teacher. So obviously there's probably going to be a what? A teacher. a teacher. All right, so let's get ready. The teacher from the Black Lagoon. It's written by Mike Thaler. He's the author. Illustrated by Jared Lee. That means he drew the pictures. It's the first day of school. I wonder who my teacher is. If you're wondering, Owen, what, what kind of face would you make? Hmm, very good. I hear Mr. Smith has dandruff and warts. Ooh. When we think of warts, what do we think of? You ever? Pimples. Pimples, or yeah, what, what animal? They do, sometimes they think of green Frogs. ribbit. Frogs, yeah. And Mrs. Jones has a whip and a wig. What's a she looks like Wonder Woman. What's a wig? Yeah, it's fake hair. But Mrs. Green is supposed to be a real monster. Oh my, I have her. Mrs. Green, room 109. What a bummer. Now, what would a bummer face look like? It's hard to see with your mask on here. I sit at my desk. I fold my hands, fold your hands. There you go. I close my eyes. I'm too young to die. Suddenly, a shadow comes to the door. It opens. What sound do you think it would make? Yeah. It slithers in. Kind of what gesture would you see a slither would make? She's really green. She has a tail. She scratches her name on the blackboard with her claw. What sound do you think that would make? Oh, I hate that sound. Freddie Jones throws a spitball. She curls up her lip and breathes fire at him. What do you think that would sound like? Freddie's gone. Just like that. There's just a little pile of ashes at his desk. What does that smell like? He's like burnt food. Yeah, like burnt food or like you're at a campground. Yeah. Look at his face. Ooh. What's he thinking? Oh, I don't want to be there. <laughs> I don't want to be there. Talk about bad breath. What do you think someone would do if they had bad breath? Um, chew gum. Yeah. Giggles, Eric Porter. What does giggle sound like? <laughs> she slithers over, unscrews his head. What do you think that would sound like? And puts his head on the globe stand. What's a globe? It's like it's a, a, it's a, it's a 3D world. Yeah, it's a 3D world. So now his head's spinning on there. It's pretty funny. Maybe. As long as it's not me, that's pretty funny. I bet she gives homework on the first day. Your homework for today, grins Miss Green. Smoke rising from her mouth. Is pages 1 to 200 in your math book. All the fraction problems. You guys have fractions yet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Parts of a whole. We've never had fractions, shouts Derek Bloom. Come up here. What do you think Derek's feeling right now? I'm scared. Scared. Yeah. Derek stands by her desk. This is a whole boy. Oh, this I gotta do it like she is. This is a whole boy. She takes a big bite. What do you think that would sound like? <laughs> This is a half boy. Now you've had fractions. Because he's a two parts now. Part of a whole, like fractions. Doris Foodle cracks her gum. Does it crack her gum? Not you gum all the time. Like pops it. Yeah. yeah. Mrs. Green swallows her in one gulp. No chewing in class. What do you think that sounds like when she swallowed her in one gulp? Yep. Mr. Bender, the principal, sticks his head in. Keep up the good work. He nods and closes the door. I wish I could get sent to the principal's office. Let's crawl the roll, cackles Miss Green. Freddie Jones is absent. Derek Bloom is half here. <laughs> Eric Porter is here and there. And Doris Foodle is digesting. What do you think digesting means? Settling. Settling, because she did what to him? She ate him. Yeah. 
What about spelling, shouts Randy Potts. Spelling can be fun, beams Mrs. Green, wiggling her fingers at him. Wiggle your fingers. What do you think that looks like? Abracadabra, Kazam! <laughs> That's tough to spell, says Randy. Suddenly, there's a flash of light. What do you think it sounds like? <laughs> and a puff of smoke. <laughs> Randy is a... Frog. Frog. Penny Weber raises her hand. Do you think she's scared when she raises her hand? Yes. Yeah, so she's probably... Can I go to the nurse? She whines. What's wrong? asks Mrs. Green. I have a huge headache, says Penny. Mrs. Green wriggles her fingers. There's another flash of light, and Penny's head is the size of a pin. What do you think it sounded like when she wriggled her head? And she went, Doop. Better? asks Miss Green. Now it's nap time. Everyone still has one. Put your head on your desk. I hope that make it to recess. Sweet dreams, she crackles as I close my eyes. So what was happening at the beginning of the story? Um, what did he do? He was like, scared. He was scared, but then he put his head down on his desk, right? So what do you think this is all is? Um, yeah, I think it's maybe all a dream. Good prediction. Ring! Suddenly the bell rings. I wake up. There's a pretty name, right? Pretty woman writing her name on the blackboard. She has real skin and no tail. What do you think she sounds like? Uh, it's like a real nice teacher. So I'll try to be a real nice teacher. I'm Mrs. Green, your teacher. How's that sound? Yeah. <laughs> she smiles. I jump out of my chair, run up and harder. Yeah. Well, thank you, she says. I'm glad to be here. Not as glad as I am. The teacher from the Black Lagoon. So, have you ever been nervous about your teacher? Yeah. You guys all have Miss Ballard. Could you imagine when I was a teacher, what's my last name? Butcher. Butcher. What do you, what do you think there's some kids that thought about when they heard that I have Mr. Butcher? What does a butcher do? They chop meat. Did you know that? That's what a butcher does. They chop meat. So do you think when they found out, uh-oh, I have Mr. Butcher, what do you think? I actually had kids said this to me. What do you think they said to me? Um, I don't want you to chop meat. <laughs> yeah, I was scared to have you because I thought all you did was chop meat. So have you ever been scared like about your teacher? Did yeah, you? Really. No? Yeah, well, you guys have Miss Bauer. She's like the sweetest teacher alive. Yeah. All right, so you enjoy the book? Yes. All right. Have you ever had some school, parts of school where, have you ever fallen asleep at school? We won't show Miss Ballard the part. Have you ever fallen asleep at school? No. No? No. Okay. So that would be, yeah. You have a nightmare at school would be kind of sad. All right. Did you wait? Yes. Good. All right. Thank you guys. Stop. So if you're going to do a read aloud with your kids, which we encourage everyone to do at least a couple times during the week, there's a few things, actually 10 things that will help you make this a really enjoyable time for your children as well as for you. Step one. Step one. Make sure you preview the book. Right? Don't just do it on the fly. Preview the book. Story time will be much richer if you've read the book at least one time beforehand. This also will ensure you that there are no surprises that might trip you up as you read something inappropriate or something like that. So get your book and make sure you actually read it. As you preview the book, look for the words, look at the pictures, see if there's anything in there that you can pick out or cool and try to think making connections that your children can make connections with as well. You know, different things in there and that will help you also too to be thinking of voices you can use um, and inflection in the story. So definitely go through the entire book um, and read it and look at all the pictures and find those interesting things that help you make connections later on. The second thing you need to do, prepare a comfy and roomy read aloud area. You want to have a place where they're feeling comfortable um, and you're comfortable reading as well. Um, it's important that your area, it's big enough so that 
everyone can sit, see comfortably. You may want to spe create a special story time magic carpet that gets rolled out just for when you do the stories. But also to make sure that you have a spot where everyone can see and hear you. Third thing you need to remember is introduce the book. Before you just start reading, look at the book cover together and ask children to guess what they think the book might be about. Name the author, the person who writes the words, and name the illustrator, the person who draws the pictures, to reinforce the concept that people re write and draw books. Point out the thing. What's on the cover? Look, there's the, uh, the title. Uh, Look at the pictures on the cover. Really make sure. Ask them, what do you think is going to be a part of that? You see this in, the, in our activity. The fourth thing, notice how you hold the book. you got to figure out which is your best side. Like when I read, um, I like to have the book on my left so I can read from my right. Um, sometimes and I'll notice that some of the pages on, the, on this side of the page are a little bit harder for me to read. Uh, with that, but notice how you hold the book. You want to make sure that you're holding the book open wide and held to your side so that you can read the story and they can see the entire thing because they're going to start thinking. Because reading a book is not just auditory, it's visual, so they need to be able to see the pictures both sides of it. So try to make sure that everyone can see it the entire thing. Notice how you hold the book. You know, if you're going to read like this, they're not going to be able to see the, the picture, so make sure you can read to the side. Practice it, it takes some time. The fifth thing, give it all you got. Don't read like a robot. Remember, one of the things that we're trying to do is model reading fluency. Reading the words correctly at a good pace, not too fast, not too slow, and with expression. So give it all you got. Dramatic and fun sound effects, hand motions, facial expressions, changes in tone, invite children to become part of the story with you. Don't just read like a robot. Make it fun. When you see a, a sound in there, poof, make that sound. When you see an opportunity for the kids to make a sound, like in the story that I had, a scratch in their finger, thought, give it all you got. Hint six. Tip number six. Involve the listeners. Don't just read the story. Involve them in the story. Remember, we want to make it interactive. We want to increase the joy of the story, helping them understand the story and, and be, really be involved in it. Give the children a line to repeat, especially if there's books that repeat the, the lines repeat over. Have them repeat those things. Give them hand motions. If they're hand motions, make sure that they're doing it. Have them add the sound effect at the appropriate time. Get them involved. You want this to be an experience, not just a part where they just sit back and listen. You want to connect all the senses. Make sure that you, which is the next uh, one of our other hints, so make sure that you're involving them. Tip number seven, help children see the story. Children who are attentive to the visual aspects or details of the book are learning how to use visual clues to get meaning from everything on the page. Make sure you point out the details and illustrations and characterizations to help children become more keen observers and discuss what they notice. You know, when I read in this book, you know, looking at this, look at here's the whip and the wig. Notice what she's wearing. You know, and help them make some connections. Um, in the story where I read, they said she looked like Wonder Woman. So make sure that they're making those connections. Help them actually see what's going on. You can see the warts on the picture so they can make those connections. Because there's going to be some vocabulary that they don't know. Help them see the story. Tip number eight, I kind of talked about this with involving your listeners, is invite the children to use their senses. We got five senses. We want to make sure that we're using all of them. Uh, what do they see? What do you think they hear? What do you think it would sound like? What do you think it would taste like? Um, what do you think, you know, use those things. Periodically stop and ask the children to pretend to use their senses and explore part of the story. Like, you know, in this, in this book, um, what do you think it sounds like when she cracks the whip? 
or this part right here um, where she turns and she puts them in the smoke. What do you smell? What do you think it smelled like? That way the kids can get connections through their senses. Tip number nine, develop ways to respond to questions. Your kids are gonna love to ask questions while you read. Some questions are important and need to be answered right away so the children will understand the rest of the story, while other questions will be answered in the story itself. Stopping too often will break up the flow of the story. Remember, we want to model fluency and comprehension. So we want to give them, if they have those questions that they need to ask or answer to help them understand the story a little bit, those are the questions you want to answer. If there's questions, and that's why it's important to preview the book that you know are going to be answered later, let them get the answer from the story. Don't tell them the answers. Let them see it or hear it in the story. The last tip, tip number 10, take time at the end for discussion. Children love to talk about the book you just read. So use creative questions to encourage in-depth thinking and discussion. Ask them questions that they can't just answer in one or two words. Ask them to make connections and apply what they learn into a new situation. You know what? Um, what do you think is going to happen next now that she, they realize it's not a mean teacher, it's a really sweet teacher? What do you think is going to happen next? Or remember when you were scared at the beginning of your first day of school? Uh, do you think, who do you think you were acting the most like? Or what would have been some things that would have been really cool that happened in the story um, that didn't happen? So that's what you need to do at the end. You want this to become something that's interactive, not just you reading, not just you making the sound, the voices, not just you making the sound effects, have it be involved. Because it's going to become a great story time um, where kids are learning how to read and, and ask questions of themselves and also to, to uh, hear what good readers do, but also too, this is going to be a bombing time for you guys as well. A great time, a family time that you can do. So those are our tips. So hopefully you have enjoyed this um, module on the read aloud, the importance of the read aloud, why you should be doing it, and how to do it. Our teachers are doing read alouds almost every day, if not um, more than once a day. I know as a school, I do one every morning for our school. You can see them on, um, our, on our YouTube page. Um, they're at the end of our announcements every day. I don't ask the questions um, as we go through it just because it's a recorded one and we can't interact. Um, but now that you've seen how to do it, we challenge you. Do. We want you to do one each night. But you know what? Do two a week. Just do two a week. If you could do two a week, it's just going to get them started and get them excited about books. Have the kids bring a book home. Uh, go to the library. Get books. Remember, and then take those steps uh, to preview the book, make sure you know it, and make this a special time. Even get that magic carpet out. Have your magic carpet for your story time. So at least two a week, we would love for you to do all one a night, but you need to make sure that you're doing some read alouds with your family. And now you know how. No excuses. You guys have a great, a great day, and make sure you're reading every single day. All right, so today's read aloud is the book, The Teacher from the Black Lagoon. It's author, the person who wrote the, the, book, the words is Mike Thaler. The illustrator, what's an illustrator? The person who does what? The, the pictures is Jared Lee. All right, so if we're looking at this book, what do you think this story is gonna be about? What do you think? A black lagoon, okay. And do you know what a lagoon is? No? No? I don't either, so maybe we'll think about it. But you think black lagoon, do you think that sounds like a, a fun place to be, or do you think it sounds like a scary place to be? Scary place. Scary place to be. And even if you were looking at the pictures, this black kind of looks kind of, oh, Halloween scary, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. So you think this is going to be a good thing, or you think it's going to be a bad thing? Bad thing. A bad thing. Maybe a bad thing. All right. So, character. Who's the story about? Just looking at this cover or reading the title, obviously there's going to be a what? Uh, black, lagoon. 
Oh, there, there might be a Black Lagoon, but we're thinking about the characters, not the place. A boy and a teacher. A boy and a teacher. Very good. Yeah, because there's a picture of a boy on here, and he looks, <gasps> oh, scared, because there's a Black Lagoon. And the author, the title says the teacher. So obviously there's probably going to be a what? A teacher. A teacher. All right, so let's get ready. The teacher from the Black Lagoon. It's written by Mike Thaler. He's the author. Illustrated by Jared Lee. That means he drew the pictures. It's the first day of school. I wonder who my teacher is. If you're wondering, Owen, what, what kind of face would you make? Hmm, very good. I hear Mr. Smith has dandruff and warts. Ooh. When we think of warts, what do we think of? Pimples. Pimples, or yeah, what, what animal? They tend, sometimes they think of green ribbit frogs, yeah. And Mrs. Jones has a whip and a wig. What's a she looks like Wonder Woman. What's a wig? Yeah, fake hair. But Mrs. Green is supposed to be a real monster. Oh my, I have her. Mrs. Green, room 109. What a bummer. Now, what would a bummer face look like? It's hard to see with your mask on here. I sit at my desk. I fold my hands, fold your hands. There you go. I close my eyes. I'm too young to die. Suddenly, a shadow comes to the door. It opens. What sound do you think it would make? Yeah. It slithers in. Kind of what gesture would you see a slither would make? She's really green. She has a tail. She scratches her name on the blackboard with her claw. What sound do you think that would make? Oh, I hate that sound. Freddie Jones throws a spitball. She curls up her lip and breathes fire at him. What do you think that would sound like? <sighs> Freddie's gone. Just like that. There's just a little pile of ashes at his desk. What does that smell like? He's... You have like bird food or like you're at a campground? Yeah. Look at his face. Ooh. What's he thinking? Oh, I don't want to be there. <laughs> I don't want to be there. Talk about bad breath. What do you think someone would do if they had bad breath? Um, chew gum. Yeah. Giggles Eric Porter. What does giggle sound like? <laughs> she slithers over, unscrews his head. What do you think that would sound like? <laughs> and puts his head on the globe stand. What's a globe? It's like it's a, a, it's a, it's a 3D world. Yeah, it's a 3D world. So now his head's spinning on there. It's pretty funny. Maybe. As long as it's not me, that's pretty funny. I bet she gives homework on the first day. Your homework for today, grins Miss Green. Smoke rising from her mouth. Is pages one to two hundred in your math book? All the fraction problems. You guys have fractions yet? Yeah. Yeah. Parts of a whole. We've never had fractions, shouts Derek Bloom. Come up here. What do you think Derek's feeling right now? I'm scared. Scared. Yeah. Derek stands by her desk. This is a whole boy. Oh, this I gotta do it like she is. This is a whole boy. She takes a big bite. What do you think that would sound like? <laughs> this is a half boy. Now you've had fractions. Because he's a two parts now. Part of a whole, like fractions. Doris Foodle cracks her gum. Does a crack her gum mean? Not you gum all the time. Like pops it, yeah. yeah. Mrs. Green swallows her in one gulp. No chewing in class. What do you think that sounds like when she swallowed her in one gulp? Yep. Mr. Bender, the principal, sticks his head in. Keep up the good work! He nods and closes the door. I wish I could get sent to the principal's office. Let's crawl the roll, cackles Miss Green. Freddie Jones is absent. Derek Bloom is half here. <laughs> Eric Porter is here and there. And Doris Foodle is digesting. What do you think digesting means? 
Sorry, Lauren. Sorry, Lauren, because she did what to him? She ate him. Yeah. What about spelling? Shouts Randy Potts. Spelling can be fun. Beams Mrs. Green, wiggling her fingers at him. Wiggle your fingers. What do you think that looks like? Oh. Abracadabra, Kazam! <laughs> That's tough to spell, says Randy. Suddenly, there's a flash of light. What do you think it sounds like? <laughs> and a puff of smoke. <laughs> Randy is a frog. frog. Yeah. Penny Weber raises her hand. You think she's scared when she raises her hand? Yes. Yeah, so she's probably, can I go to the nurse? She whines. What's wrong? Asks Mrs. Green. I have a huge headache, says Penny. Mrs. Green wriggles her fingers. There's another flash of light, and Penny's head is the size of a pin. What do you think it sounded like when she wriggled her hand? And she went, Nope. Better? Asked Miss Green. Now it's nap time. Everyone still has one. Put your head on your desk. I hope that make it to recess. Sweet dreams, she crackles as I close my eyes. So what was happening at the beginning of the story? Um, what did he do? He was like, scared. He was scared, but then he put his head down on his desk, right? So what do you think this is all is? Yeah, I think it's maybe all a dream. Good prediction. Ring! Suddenly the bell rings. I wake up. There's a pretty name, right? Pretty woman writing her name on the blackboard. She has real skin and no tail. What do you think she sounds like? That's like a real nice teacher, so I'll try to be a real nice teacher. I'm Mrs. Green, your teacher. How's that sound? <laughs> she smiles. I jump out of my chair, run up, and hug her. Yeah. Well, thank you, she says. I'm glad to be here. Not as glad as I am. The teacher from the Black Lagoon. So. Have you ever been nervous about your teacher? Yeah. You guys all have Miss Ballard. Could you imagine when I was a teacher, what's my last name? Butcher. Butcher. What do, you, what do you think there's some kids that thought about when they heard that I have Mr. Butcher? What does a butcher do? They chop meat. Did you know that? That's what a butcher does, they chop meat. So do you think when they found out, uh-oh, I have Mr. Butcher, what do you think? I actually had kids said this to me. What do you think they said to me? <laughs> yeah, I was scared to have you because I thought all you did was chop me. So, have you ever been scared, like, about your teacher? Did yeah, you? Not really. No. Yeah, well, you guys have Miss Bauer. She's like the sweetest teacher alive. Yeah. All right. So, did you enjoy the book? Yes. All right. Have you ever had some school parts of school where have you ever fallen asleep at school? We won't show Miss Bauer the book. Have you ever fallen asleep at school? No. 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 Okay. So that would be yeah. You have a nightmare at school. Do you kind of that? All right. Did you wait? Thank you.